Coming up on South Coast Spotlight, surround yourself with the beauty of orchids. Take a tour through the springtime wilderness and see who visits a local elementary school. All that and more right now on South Coast Spotlight. Hi, welcome to South Coast Spotlight. I'm Stephanie Taylor. Join us as we take you into a world of art and culture and explore the best that our community has to offer. As Franklin Delano Roosevelt once said, we may not be able to prepare the future for our children, but we can at least prepare the children for the future. A local congresswoman visits one of Santa Barbara's elementary schools and gives the students an opportunity to see what she's working on for their future. I'm here at Washington Elementary School, home of the Wildcats, where Congresswoman Lois Capps will address the sixth graders and answer questions about her role in the federal government. As a former nurse and public health advocate for the Santa Barbara School District, Congresswoman Lois Capps has strong feelings of loyalty to Washington Elementary School. Well, it's wonderful to be here uh, as someone who now works in the United States Congress to have the background of being a school nurse. I know Washington, I know the Wildcats well, and to be here today to, uh, first of all, meet with the student council uh, was a real pleasure and honor for me uh, to share with them um, uh, my experiences in Washington, D.C. And now I'm about to meet with the sixth grade, and I look forward to their questions. Capps says that civic education is critical to keeping our democracy strong. She says she's been looking forward to speaking with the students about the role of our federal government and the work she does in Congress on their behalf. Having Congresswoman Lois Capps come to visit our student council and our sixth grade is important to the community because it shows students how important representative government is and it gives them an opportunity to hear potentially what they could be involved in as they become citizens and adults. And it gives her an opportunity to see what the issues in education are and how she can better represent our district as well. CAPS also covered topics like renewable energy, health care, and federally funded education programs. Students were given the opportunity to ask the Congresswoman questions they prepared in class with their teachers. This has been Stephanie Taylor reporting for TVSB. You don't have to travel around the world to enjoy some of the most beautiful and exotic orchids. Here in Santa Barbara, the International Orchid Show is held annually and showcases the beauty and magic of this award-winning flower. We are giving Stop and Smell the Roses a whole new meaning right here at the orchid capital of the world in Santa Barbara. It is the 70th anniversary of the International Orchid Show. Orchids are in full bloom at the Earl Warren Showgrounds for the 70th Annual Orchid Show. Visitors come to experience the beauty of color and smells that this diverse flower has to offer. It's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, there's not a favorite one here. But if you do find a favorite, the sales area has a wide array of vendors where visitors can purchase an orchid to take home and enjoy. Right here at the show, there's orchids from South America, Mexico, the Philippines, and many more countries. The countless hours of work that have been put into this event is pretty amazing. As you can see, all of the orchids and the waterfall in the background, there's so much here. There are several award-winning exhibitors from all over the world on display, but one that caught the judges' attention reflects the culture of our very own coastal town. One of Santa Barbara's most famous celebrations is Fiesta, Old Spanish Days. And Westerly Orchids has really captured the essence of the celebration that we have every year in Santa Barbara. Many come to celebrate the orchids for their variety, various shapes and sizes, and their adaptability to varying climates. They grow all the way from snow to the tropics. It, it's, it's really amazing. It's like going to heaven. It's really breathtaking. Visitors of all ages appreciate the beauty of the show, and many take advantage of the beautiful exhibits as unique photo opportunities. People are engaging in the exhibits like never before. Within the past five years, the selfie effect has have come to the Santa Barbara Orchid Show. Exhibitors also have picked up on that, and they try to make photo opportunities for people to enjoy, and so that they have this 
you know, ongoing experience with their exhibit because it lasts a lifetime that way. Visitors can also get up close and personal to study their favorite orchids. You notice that they have microscopes here and the microscopes are intended for people to be able to look through little pieces of orchids. There is a rich history behind the flower that thrives in Santa Barbara's Mediterranean climate. The Santa Barbara International Orchid Show started 70 years ago. Coincidentally, World War II ended 70 years ago. So World War II just added to the orchid population in Santa Barbara. There is already some wealthy orchid growers in Hope Ranch and Montecito. However, during World War II, we had European growers from the Mediterranean, Germany, France, send their orchids over to Santa Barbara as a safe haven for orchids that were being bombed and in the middle of European turmoil. Santa Barbara is now one of the headquarters for orchids in the entire world. To get expert information about orchid growing in the Santa Barbara area, visit the Orchid Society of Santa Barbara. Bailey Miller reporting for TVSB. It's only a 25 minute drive to Kachuma Lake, located in beautiful San Ynez Valley. The recreation area offers a fun and relaxing getaway. Spring is a magical time of year at Kachuma Lake. Located off Scenic Highway 154 in the San Ynez Valley, the Kachuma Lake Recreation Area is the perfect place to experience the flora and fauna of California. And despite the drought, visitors can expect to see plenty of wildlife activity. It's hard to understand that we're in a severe drought right now, given how green and lush everything is. And one of the great things about seeing the lake right now is that you can see the old river course. You have these old exposed river terraces. Those are ideal places for wildlife to hunt, rest, feed. They have plenty of wide angle view to see if any predators are around. They can walk into the vegetation and virtually disappear. We see bald eagles feeding on prey that they've caught. So the shoreline is, there's more of it, um, and there are more opportunities to see wildlife. And to get a hands-on experience with nature, there's a place where community members can visit free of charge. The Nature Center is a nonprofit within Kachuma Recreation Area and we actually were founded in 1988 by a naturalist, Neil Taylor, and he's actually famous in these parts because he's just a great storyteller and an amazing fisherman. He passed away a couple years ago, but his legend and, and legacy carries on with the Nature Center. The center has a sign inside that says, please touch. Mm -hmm. So it's very kid-friendly, very people-friendly, and all the exhibits have been done by volunteers, so it's been a real labor of love. We also have an amazing support through our membership and donors, and that's how we're able to keep the Nature Center free so everybody in the community and the campers can come and enjoy the exhibits and all the activities. It's an unusual situation having a nonprofit within the county park, but it's a great relationship. We partner on so many different things. Visitors will get the chance to experience different habitats along the Don Wimpress Nature Trail. We walk through Oak Savanna, we get into Chaparral where you can smell purple sage. We walk through Oak Woodland where you have the shade of, of the oak trees above your head and a really nice wooded canopy. The Lake Cruise, Nature Walk, and Nature Center provide such an enriching and educational experience with nature that they're all offered as a three-part field trip. We have a thriving field trip program for schools and community groups. So they get the boat ride and exposed to things like wildlife like deer, bald eagles, hawks, herons. Then we take them on the nature walk so they actually get out in touching things, walking on a trail, and then they get a more hands-on experience in the nature center where docents do presentations for them and also the children have a chance to explore the center. The park also offers a junior ranger program where kids from 3 to 12 years old can learn about nature and wildlife and the importance of responsibility in their environment. There are four different levels and they receive a badge, a different badge. So acorn woodpecker is 3 to 6, great blue heron is 7 to 9 years old, mountain lion is 10 and 11, and then bald eagle is 12 and up. 
We talk trash. We talk about the importance of picking up litter, the danger of litter to wildlife. Then we go into the center and each child answers questions about their badge animal. When everyone's finished, we convene back out here and review a little bit what they've learned, uh, and then we award their badges. For the fishing enthusiast, Kachuma is one of Southern California's finest lakes because of the various fish habitats. And this spring, Kachuma Lake will be planting rainbow trout just in time for the 20th Annual Fishing Derby. It's a weekend of camping and fishing, and we have all sorts of different categories for different species of fish. We give away over $5,000 in cash prizes and thousands in merchandise prizes. We hope everybody comes out to enjoy it. It's just a really great, great way to enjoy camping and a fun weekend at Kachuma and help raise money for the Nature Center. There's a lot to do on the water as well. People can come and rent small boats, they can rent pontoon boats, they can rent kayaks. And for the ultimate nature adventure, the park's easy to use online reservation page allows you to preview your campsite for a custom camping experience. They can go tent camping when there are beautiful sites. Most are shaded by oaks and have picnic tables. If people want to step it up a little bit, we have our yurts, which are really fun to stay in. They're very popular, so people do need to plan well in advance. We have uh, seven cabins. One of our cabins is accessible, which makes it really easy for people. But they have everything. They've got hot showers, coffee makers, microwaves, and even television. So whether you're roughing it in a tent or in a cabin with a lake view, camping at Kachuma Lake is an experience you won't want to miss. From fishing to camping, boating to nature walks, Kachuma Lake Recreation Area has something for nature lovers of all ages. Showing people the acorn woodpeckers uh, and their granary trees in the valley oaks, showing them pack rats nests on the nature trail, making sure everybody knows what poison oak looks like, smelling coastal sage, looking at wild cucumber. It doesn't matter how old you are. Those things are great to see uh, no matter the age. For more information about the programs offered at Kachuma Lake Recreation Area, please visit sbparks.org. Thanks for sharing this journey with us. Join us next time on South Coast Spotlight for another adventure on the American Riviera. If you have ideas for a future segment, email us at info at tvsb.tv. I'm Stephanie Taylor, and until next time, don't forget to put some culture in your day.